Hey, uh, sorry, ladies. I, uh, I gotta steal your dance partner here. What are you uh, doing? I am rescuing you. From what? From what? The makeup people are amazing. The first couple times that I put the makeup on, it was really fun. The fat suits are designed in multiple pieces so that they can get them on and off. First, you pull on the, the bottom part of the suit. It's the butt and the thighs, and then the calves zip on. And then you get into the top. Oh my god, there she is. There's Rosemary. Where? Straight ahead, across the field. Is she behind the rhino? We knew we were going to have to put her in the fat suit, because we were going to have to see what she really looked like. We just couldn't you know, go the whole movie and not reveal that to the audience. And we turned to Tony Gardner, who's our guy. He's the best. In the beginning, there was a huge debate on what she was going to look like all the way around. Did we want to know it was her, not know it was her? Did we really want to change her? We talked about different skin conditions, acne, bigger teeth, different color hair. I mean, how far should we take this character so that when she's idealized That's through Hal's eyes, do we want it to be an extreme change or still know who it was? We knew that he would be the guy to do it, uh, but we had to work a little bit with exactly what she looked like. They wanted me to have a good time with it, but they wanted it to be real. It was really crucial that people believed that this person was a real person, and we weren't making a joke out of her or a joke out of any of the other makeups. We didn't want to make her sort of overly heavy, way, way, way heavy, because if we made her too heavy, then once we sort of revealed her in the film, it would be too much of a reaction you know, to the audience. And at the same time, if we didn't make her heavy enough, it, it would be awful. We did a whole test makeup and we did her uh, with a really thick face and huge chubby cheeks. And everybody really liked the makeup and thought she looked really cute. But then the verdict came in. We want to be able to see that it's Gwyneth more than it, you know, she weighs 350 pounds. We're going to get crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look normal? Once or twice, Early on, she came out, and we couldn't really tell that it was Gwyneth in there. We had to go through a couple suits. The first one we put on, it was it was pretty impressive. But then we realized, wait a second, I don't see Gwyneth in there. This could be anybody. You had to see Gwyneth. I'm leaving for Kiravaz tonight for 14 months. You need to see her her eyes and her smile, and there had to be that resemblance that uh, you could still see. So we kind of balanced, it has to be realistic, but lighthearted, and it has to look like her. And obviously the main goal is to make her comfortable so that she could do her job too. Are you sure that that's what you want to do? Cuckoo! Cuckoo! The only thing that changes about her is the way that he sees her. So she's the same, whether you know she's thin or fat, she's the same exact person. You're the only girl I've ever loved, and I just want—I didn't want you to go away without knowing that. When she's in the suit, she's still beautiful. She, you take a step back and you think, oh my God, she's completely different than I've ever seen her. But then when you look real close, you say, wait a minute, she's still beautiful. You know, she really is. And that's a tribute to Gwyneth and Tony Gardner, who made the suit. She was really busy when we started pre-production. So we got her for about 15 minutes the very first day, and we did a laser scan of her whole body so that we had a body form to build the actual body suits on. Well, then I had a life cast made of my head. We cast her head and her arms uh, and her teeth. That was really incredible. I mean, they cover your whole head in plaster and everything. I had to do some serious meditation during that part. And we started doing sculptures on these body forms to try and show Pete and Bobby what we thought the makeup could look like. And we gave them a lot of options. At the same time, we were also bringing in nude models that weighed anywhere from 250 pounds to 450 pounds and asking them to come into our shop and stand there in their underwear and we would take pictures of them. And then we had to put all these pictures together in this photo book and send it off to Pete and Bob. You know, it's a, which, which degree of largeness would you like? and what sort of shape, because people wear weight really different. And we went through a lot of different sort of processes, you know, and looked at a lot of different pictures before we sort of narrowed in on the right sort of size. And they sort of use that as sort of a template to say, I like this torso, but these arms and X, Y, Z. And then um, based on that, um, we, were, we were able to design sort of our ideal person. And one of the models that we brought in was Ivy. Because of the way her suit works, anytime where like my arms or legs are like bare, you know, like um, the fat one is from behind, that's me. 
man, she was just like the coolest person to work with and deal with as far as anything we needed to do. Very self-confident, just a very sweet person. And we actually had to build a fat suit for Ivy to make her large enough to where we wanted to take Gwyneth. It's padding, it's about an inch thick around the body, and on the butt it's got about an inch of padding, and then it's like a big sack, like a, an abdomen area, and then the boobs are bigger and saggier than mine to make it look like the same size as her. And when you get into this position, see that's you're blocked off, we don't see her, you, so if you could just cheat your head out a little on that. Yeah, like that, yes, there you go. I mean, we started out with, with Gwyneth in a fat suit, then, they decided, you know, Ivy was a great person to work with. Let's put her in a fat suit and bring her up to the same size. Then a few weeks before filming started, they're like, you know what? Let's make the mom really heavy, too. Hello. We didn't even have time to do a body cast of her. We had to find a double because she was literally flown in from New York, got off the plane, driven right to the, our shop, walked in the door. Hi, nice to meet you. Put on the spandex uniform, sit in this chair. We're going to pour a bunch of junk on your head. And then as the show progressed in pre-production, we want to make Ralph look pretty funky. We want to make Katrina pretty messed up. We want to go to prosthetics because the big debate was, do we do something subtle or you know, again, how far do we take it? What's cartoony, what's real, what's appropriate for this character? And then there's the little burn girl in the hospital, and what's the right balance between a realistic burn and a, a burn that's not gonna repulse people so that you'll listen to what this little girl has to say. And the film stock they're using absorbs reds and kicks light off of it different than a normal film stock. And when someone says, do a burn makeup on a little kid, but you can't use red, you you have to learn different ways to interpret things, uh, but on camera you see the red. So you know there's a there was a learning curve all the way around, and there was very little pre-production time to do test makeups. We didn't start test makeups on Gwyneth or Jill until a few days before they shot here in North Carolina, and they would come in a few days before the shoot. We would have the opportunity to do the makeup, let Pete and Bobby take a look at it, see what they thought, and tweak it to determine what was appropriate for the character. Like Brooke Burns, who played Katrina, our makeup artist had a box of five different size noses, uh, two different sets of teeth, a box of pimples, a box of warts, uh, some hair colors, and some shampoos to put in the hair to make it look greasy and stuff like that. And it was sort of the grab bag. Let's mix and match and, and see how far we can take it. The first couple times that I put the makeup on, it was really fun. And it was like being a part of the best gag on set. And then the third time, I sort of like adapted this person. Starting out with the hair, we put some black tattoo in the roots, so we have some nice rootage growing out there. Brown powder to dull down the blonde. A little bit of the party grease, you know, just a little not showered in a couple of days. Teeth, uh, fake teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Snap them back in. They had to paint the bottom ones to match, which doesn't taste very good, but you get used to it. Um, you know, a little red rash everywhere, a couple little cold sores, <laughs> a little bit of a unibrow happening, which is always nice. We lightened it up, though, from what it used to be. People didn't have any clue that it was me. I'd walk on the set even, and people who had met me and spoken to me and everything were like, poor girl got a really bad double, you know? <laughs> the nose was actually created from two and a half foam nose pieces. This is gelatin and uh, just kind of glued on and smoothed over and it's not small if you see. <laughs> Brown contacts instead of the blue eyes. What else? A little shagginess, brush down the rest of the brow to match the Una thing. I don't know. You tell me. She looks fantastic. <laughs> it's a brook. Is it the cab? Okay. We're with the thing, you know. When Gwyneth gets in in the morning, we'll sit her down, we'll pull all her hair back, get it out of the way, pin it up real tight on the sides. We'll clean off her skin, and then basically the first thing we do is we put her into the prosthetic makeup, which is gluing all the foam rubber down to her skin, blending in the edges, and then putting all the coloring on top of that. It takes about an hour, 45 minutes to stick it on properly. Then it's another hour, hour and a half to paint it. Then after that, we'll put on her wig and we'll do whatever makeup her character's supposed to be wearing then on top of that. And then we wait till the last minute on set after they've done their rehearsals or blocking, and we'll put her into the fat suit. Usually you'll find her walking around in the butt 
and the legs with the wardrobe over top of that. And then we'll do the torso and the top half of our wardrobe right before she needs to shoot. The fat suits are designed in multiple pieces so that they can get them on and off quickly. Or if there's a break between takes, we can take off just like the top half. So there's a bottom half that is the butt and the thighs. The calves come off of that separate. Then there's an upper body that's the torso, the shoulders, and the upper arms. And then the lower arms um, come off separate as well. So we have the option of her wearing these, these fat hands also, um, based on how the shot's framed or how they're gonna see the hands. It's basically her call. And then from uh, mid sternum up, she's wearing prosthetic makeup that's foam latex. And it covers pretty much all of her. And then over top of that, she has a wig that matches her normal look. And we debated contact lenses, and we had actually done a few sets of teeth for her. But in the end, her makeup was basically the two-piece fat suit and the prosthetic makeup and the wig, and then some coloring on top of that. What I tried to do was sort of develop the character fully as the thin version of Rosemary. And so the fat suit just becomes something that's added at the end, and it doesn't matter if it's on or off, because the character is the same person. Hey, hey, hey now, it's me, your love bunny. What are you, some kind of psycho? <laughs> I don't think she was very inhibited by acting through the prosthetics at all. I think when we started out in the beginning, we'd done her character with a hair lip scar, even right here. And so she was completely buried in foam. And I think she was more excited about the fact that she was gone than anything else, that it was something completely different than what she'd done before. And we did the very first makeup test on her and put the makeup on her. She was standing in front of the mirror looking at herself going, oh man. Oh my God. I'm so into it. Are you? Oh, it's awesome. She was never inhibited. And she actually tried to work with the suit to figure out how to move right. And that's kind of what got us into walking down the hall, which led to, hey, let's go down to the bar, which led to, let's go talk to everybody we can find and see if they'll buy this makeup. It was great, it was great. It was like a great way to start because we all relaxed and we all knew what we were gonna be in for. And I think we sort of all embraced it at that point. Like we can pull this off and have some fun with it.